Hello everybody and welcome back. This is your English teacher and I'm going to introduce you a new lesson about Wuthering Heights, the novel written by Emily Bronte, one of the three famous Bronte sisters, if you remember them. I hope so. Okay, let's get started. So, the first edition of the novel, uh, well, actually the novel was written between 1845 and 1846, but it was published in London in 1847. As you maybe remember or can see, on the book cover and on the front page, you won't find the name of Emily Bronte on, because the book was published using a male pseudonym, Alice Bell, whose initials actually coincide with the initials of Emily Bronte. Now, the fact that this pseudonym was used, that a male pseudonym was used, tells us a lot about how the figure of the woman writer was still far from being considered acceptable by common sense. It was not usual that a young girl or a woman uh, would become a writer. It was a job for men, you see. So that is why uh, books are written by ladies were published anonymously or using a male pseudonym. Anyway, the novel was not immediately a success, also because its innovative structure uh, puzzled, confused the critics. The plot, oh well, the plot is a very complicated story because it involves two generations of two different families living as neighbours in two different estates in Yorkshire and whose incidents and the things that happen intertwine continuously between these two families. Now, it is basically a quite gloomy, dark uh, love story with several gothic touches, and its main protagonists are part of a virtual triangle. Now, this triangle won't lead anywhere good, because it is bound to provide an unhappy ending, at least at the first part of the novel. Only eventually, so at the end of the novel, will this tragic end be redeemed, be transformed into something different, thanks to the second generations of characters. Now let's have a look at the protagonist of the most famous part of the novel, uh, which is the first one. Now we have Catherine, this young lady that you can see here. Then you have Heathcliff, this young man here, quite handsome actually. Then you have Edgar, another young man. And then, quite strangely, you don't have a man or a woman, but you have a landscape. Uh, am I wrong? No, because actually Yorkshire Moors are one of the protagonists of this novel. Here they are, the Yorkshire Moors. Now, Yorkshire is a part of England which is in the north of England and has some, well, they call them mountains. Actually, they are hills. And these hills are characterized by moors. Moors is this kind of landscape where you can't see many trees, there are lots of bushes, grass, stones, rocks, etc. And it's quite always windy, a very savage, a very wide landscape. Let's have a look at these three protagonists separately. Now, first of all, take a look at the couple, uh, sister and brother. Well, are they actually sister and brother? Catherine and Heathcliff grow as a sister and brother at Wuthering Heights, which is a quite a gothic and gloomy mansion on the wildest part of Yorkshire Moors. So they grow up as brother and sister. They grow up happy, free, they have it all, but they are not actually related by blood. In fact, Heathcliff is a foundling, an orphan, that Catherine's father has found during one of his voyages and has taken back home when he grows up together with Catherine. So at the beginning, they consider themselves uh, brother and sister, but then the relation develops. Catherine, 
Uh, Catherine, as you can see, is beautiful. These are all different actresses uh, who played the role of uh, Catherine in different films. So Catherine is beautiful, is self-confident, is quite capricious and has irreverent traits. She's very intelligent. She wants an easy and comfortable life. Uh, be aware of the fact that Catherine already belongs to quite a wealthy family. Well, she wants to keep that level of of wealth during her life and as you can imagine for women it was very important to find a good job a good husband uh, a rich husband so this is her intention to grant herself a good marriage in order to be rich now here they are here we are um, they are because there are three different actors who play the role of Heathcliff and this is Heathcliff uh, there are some things in common, uh, as you can see in these uh, photographs, uh, some characteristics uh, which are in common among these three actors. As a matter of fact, Heathcliff is described in the novel as dark-skinned, so with a dark skin, and a kind of gypsy in his aspect. So uh, the idea that we get is that he is free, wild, and his personality lacks of self-control. He easily becomes angry, he easily shows his feelings, his passions, his rage, etc. He is not much self-controlled. And this same name reveals his personality. Heathcliff is composed of two different names. Heath, which is a synonym of moor, and Cliff, which is a hard rock. A rocky promontory. So as you can see also his name mirrors his personality. And we can say that he is a true Byronic hero fully. So if you remember Byronic hero, mysterious, um, he thinks he is superior to the others, he is an outcast, nobody understands him, he is passionate, he is wild, he is handsome, he is mysterious, he is fascinating. Okay, this is it, Cliff. Edgar, well, Edgar is a totally different kind of man. He is a young man and is the only heir of the very rich Linton family, so he will inherit all the richness of the family. Uh, he's the typical, quiet, self-controlled, respectable country gentleman with no stains and no mysteries, no guilts in his life. So he's the perfect opposite to Heathcliff. He lives at another mansion, Thrashcross Grange, which is a beautiful and bright villa on the moors, not very far from Wuthering Heights. So we can say that Edgar is neighbor to uh, Heathcliff and Catherine. And so guess what? Uh, I was speaking about a triangle because of course Catherine and Heathcliff madly fall in love with one another as soon as they become teenagers and they understand that they love one another. At the same time, Edgar, the blonde one, the man here on the left, uh, falls in love with Catherine and he asks her to marry him. And now, of course, this gives birth to a dilemma because Catherine is torn, is divided in two. Whom and what to choose? Heathcliff, the real love of her love, so wild, so passionate, but also poor and so bad-mannered, or Edgar, who is so refined, who is so calm and can give her the life that she wants. The problem is it, that Catherine doesn't really love Edgar. She feels affection to him, but nothing more, because the love of her life is Heathcliff. So, what will she choose? Well, of course, she will follow her reasoning, her sensibility, and she chooses to marry Edgar. Now, of course, her choice will um, cause other problems because Heathcliff now is desperate and unspeakably angry at Catherine. He is really furious for this because he's been rejected. 
so much so that he leaves Wuthering Heights and we, the readers, lose his traces. I know you want to know the ending. <laughs> Keep calm and you have it. So, after three years, Heathcliff comes back and he's a totally another man. We are not told how, but during his absence, he has become a very rich, refined and still more handsome gentleman. But his personality is still evil, you know. He's always the same, maybe worse, because now he's rich, he's refined, he maybe got some education somewhere, and he has come back for one reason. He is searching for revenge. Against what? Against who? <laughs> Against everybody. Although his love for Catherine is unchanged, so he himself is living a dilemma. He loves Catherine so much, but he also wants to destroy her life and the happiness that she has been building with Edgar. So, now the problem is that Elle Catherine can't be his, of course, because she is married to Edgar, and now she is also expecting a baby from Edgar. Of course, the presence of Heathcliff is very destabilizing for Catherine. It's disturbing, because he has so, so uh, such bad manners. He's so uneducated, so unpolite, he's so harsh, he's so violent still. And this, this causes Catherine to be ill repeatedly. So her nerves feel very weak in front of Heathcliff. We're nearly there, we're nearly towards the end. I have chosen three important scenes uh, from different films that can summarize the ending of the novel. Catherine gives birth to Edgar's daughter, uh, who will be Kristen, who will be baptized with her same name. Uh, Catherine, the mother, and the daughter will be called Catty. And this is quite strange, and it's a particular that leads us into thinking that the story might enter a loop, might repeat itself hmm, with this young girl having the same name as his mother. So we are already preparing to thinking that maybe the story will repeat again. After the delivery, so after the, the baby girl um, is born, Catherine dies. And Catherine dies because of the delivery of the childbirth, uh, but also because she has, she had already a weak um, health um, due to Heathcliff's uh, violent, aggressive personality. Um, so she was really suffering very much and this situation had weakened her strength. That is why she dies. Now it's not a good moment for Heathcliff. He finds no peace. He is so sad, but also so angry still at Catherine because she has left him with her dying, with her death. So he finds no peace after Catherine's death and starts destroying his own life and the life and happiness of all the people that surround him. Only when he will have, when he has his revenge, will he leave this world. And as a matter of fact, he's found dead in Catherine's room. Maybe he has committed suicide. Emily Bronte is not very much clear upon that. In the meantime, while this is happening, the order is reestablished, and thanks to another marriage, uh, because Katty, the young Katty, falls in love with Hatton, who was his cousin and who had been grown up by Heathcliff, having some of the same traits of Heathcliff. 